Hi, my name is Aaron Mishu and I'm a graduate student at Purdue's College of Engineering. And today I'm going to present an S lecture on the optimality of Bayes' decision rule. So what is an S lecture? An S lecture is a student lecture and if you go to this URL, projectrear.org, you'll find a variety of stu student lectures on these topics. These are the broad topic outlines. Most of these S lectures are done by graduate students like myself. Some of them are done by Purdue faculty and uh, most of them are web pages. Some of them are videos just like this one. Uh, and they're presented in a variety of different languages, mainly English, but a variety of different languages, including, for example, um, Spanish and Russian. So if you're interested in any of these topics, I recommend visiting projectcreator.org uh, to check out the materials there. Okay, moving on to today's talk. We're, out, we're interested in the optimality of basis decision rule. So let's start by stating we have a variable x. It's a random variable over some space omega. And we have a two category decision problem. So we want to choose hypothesis 1 when x falls in the set omega 1. And we want to choose hypothesis 2 when x falls in the set omega 2. And sets omega 1 and omega 2 are a partition of capital omega, which means that x must fall in precisely one of these two sets. The two category decision problem can be generalized to the n category decision problem by creating a decision tree. So you collapse hypotheses 2 through n into this uh, set here. And if you choose this particular hypothesis, which is now hypothesis 2 through n, you start recursively a new decision problem where you discriminate between hypothesis 2 and 3 through n. And uh, so the two category decision problem is really the pith uh, of what we're talking about. And if we can show, uh, we can, if we can show that it is optimal uh, to use the Bayes decision rule in the two category case, we've shown that it is optimal in the n category case. Now the optimal decision is, and this is what we're going to prove, that we're going to choose hypothesis 1 when this weighted probability is greater than this weighted probability. So in this notation, the capital P is the probability that x is in set omega 1, so this is the prior, and this small p is the PDF, or probability density function, for a continuous random variable. And uh, here we're saying uh, the PDF of x given omega 1 is true. And if this was, this is of course assuming we have a continuous random variable. If our random variable is discrete, we would be replacing our probability density function with a probability mass function and would use summations instead of integrals, but the math is exactly the same all the way through this presentation. So what we're saying is if we, we're, we're going to choose hypothesis 1 if the probability of x given hypothesis 1 weighted by the prior probability of omega 1 being true is greater than or equal to the probability of x given omega 2 is true uh, weighted by the probability of omega 2 being true and we choose hypothesis 2 when we don't choose hypothesis 1. So we do that, we've just replaced our greater than or equal sign with a less than sign. So let's start by defining a decision rule. This is some decision rule. It could be chosen arbitrarily or you have some metric for choosing it. And uh, we're going to compare and contrast this decision rule with the Bayes decision rule and prove that the Bayes decision rule is always better or at least as good as this uh, uh, arbitrary decision rule no matter how carefully you choose it. So in our arbitrary decision rule, we're going to choose hypothesis 1 when x is in region 1 and hypothesis 2 when x is in region 2. And of course, region 1 and region 2 make a partition of capital omega. So our x must fall into one and precisely one of these two sets. Okay, 
just to emphasize that this decision rule is possibly non-optimal. It may be optimal, but it's possibly non-optimal. It's just some decision rule. Compare that with the Bayes decision rule, where we have the same setup, except for instead of region 1, we're going to use region omega 1 and region omega 2, and uh, sets rather, set omega 1 and set omega 2, and we're going to choose hypothesis 1 if x is in set omega 1, and hypothesis 2 if x is in set uh, omega 2. And in this case, we can define the sets omega 1 and omega 2 uh, precisely because we know what the Bayes decision rule is. And in, indeed, this is what we're trying to prove, that this is optimal. And uh, in this case, the set omega 1 is those members x in omega where this probability statement is, uh, this weighted probability statement is true. Okay? So where is our error in our deci decision rule? Well, there's two types of errors. We could choose hypothesis 1 when omega 2, when x is really in set omega 2, and we could choose hypothesis 2 when x is really in set omega 1. So these are our two different errors for, for our arbitrary decision rule. And these are joint probabilities, so we can rewrite it as a conditional probability multiplied by a prior and we can uh, replace this probability statement here with an uh, integral over the PDF and here we're integrating over region 1 because x is in region 1 here and here we're integrating over region 2 because x is in region 2 here. So compare that with Bayes' error where well, we have the same expression as this one here except for instead of integrating over region 1, we integrate over uh, set omega 1, and instead of region 2, we're integrating over set omega 2 here. So this is the error, probability of making an error with the arbitrary decision rule, and the probability of making an error using the Bayes decision rule. So let's define a new term, and we'll call it the delta error, or difference in error, between our the probability of making uh, an error in our arbitrary decision rule and in the Bayes decision rule. If we can show that this uh, difference in error is always greater than or equal to zero, then that implies, or it's rather it's equivalent to saying, that th the probability of this error uh, is always greater than or, or at least equal to the probability of this error, which implies in turn that the Bayes error is optimal. So we want to show that this change in error is always greater than or equal to zero. So before we get to that, we'll have to look at some, uh, just maybe some revision on uh, set mathematics. Um, we have uh, the region one, region two, and omega one and omega two are partitions of omega. And we can rewrite region 1 as, uh, well here we have region, uh, here we have set omega 1 in the blue circle and set omega 2 is the negation of omega 1, so it's this uh, cream colored uh, rest of the set. And if we put the yellow circle region 1 here, we can see that region 1 is divided into two sections. There's the part of region 1 which overlaps with set omega 2 and there's a part of region 1 which overlaps with set omega 1 and of course these two parts are disjoint and so we can write region 1 as uh, um, the, uh, the union of the, uh, uh, of the two different parts that the, the union of the parts that intersect with these two different sets um, and this is region 1 written in this way and we can write region 2 in this way and set omega 1 and set omega 2 this way. So a Venn diagram is not a proof but you can prove this using elementary set mathematics. And this will become important when we look at the integrals in this uh, delta error term. So let's look at this delta error term. Well we have the probability of making an error using our arbitrary decision rule, subtracting off the probability of making an error using the Bayes decision rule. Okay, so this is just from the previous slide. 
Now, note that we have um, uh, omega 2 here and omega 2 here, so we can collect some terms like this. And here we have a difference between two integrals. Uh, the integrals are exactly the same, but the regions are different. This is region 1 and this is region, uh, and this is set omega 1. So we can simplify this further by thinking what, uh, what it means to take the difference here in these two regions. Well, again, going back to a Venn diagram, if we look at region 1 here, which is here, and we subtract off region omega 1, well, this intersecting part here becomes zero because uh, it's like um, one times these quantities from in the yellow region minus one times these quantities in the blue region, and so all of these parts here, one minus one is zero. So that means that when we look at this uh, difference between these two regions, we have region 1 intersected with omega 2, which is uh, the non-zero portion of this, subtracting off set omega 1 intersected with region 2, which is the non-zero portion of this, or the remainder of this, after the set difference. And then this term here is, uh, is, exactly, is done in exactly the analogous way. So at this stage, we can note that we have a, a uh, intersection between region 1 and omega 2 here, and region 1 and omega 2 here, and we have overlapping, we have the same region here as here. So we're going to be able to simplify this. So this is the expression we're just looking at, and noting these overlapping, uh, these, uh, the similarity in these regions, or the equality in these regions, we can rewrite this uh, term as just two integrals. In this case, we're going to take uh, region 1, omega 2, so it's this term, and we subtract off this term here. But we're going to do it inside of the integral. So we take this part here, multiply it by omega 2, the prior for omega 2. So that gives us this. And we'll subtract off this, multiplied by this prior. It gives us this term here. Okay, and then this is done in an exactly analogous way, uh, but we're going to take this term here, multiplied by the prior of omega 1, and subtract off this term here, multiplied by the prior of omega 2, and that gives us this integral here. So we're almost done now, because if you recall, omega 1 is the set where this equality holds true, and we have an integral here over omega 1. Uh, it's an integral over the intersection of omega 1 and, and, and region 2, but within this integral, this equality is going to hold true because every member of this, every uh, element in this integral uh, includes um, uh, elements from set omega 1. And therefore, we know that this quantity here which is this quantity here, is greater than or equal to this quantity here, which is this quantity here, and that makes this whole integral greater than zero. And, and for the same reason, we can say that this integral here is greater than or equal to zero by the definition of the set omega 2, okay, which has these guys reversed. So this quantity here is greater than this quantity here. So this integral is greater than or equal to 1, and this is 0 rather, and this integral is greater than or equal to 0. And if you add two things, and each thing is greater than or equal to 0, then the result is greater than or equal to 0, and we have the error greater than or equal to 0. And if you recall, our difference in error term is between, is the difference between our arbitrary decision rule and Bayes decision rule, and that's equivalent to saying that our arbitrary decision rule has a greater than or equal to error 
than our base decision rule. So it doesn't matter how we choose it, the best we can do is the Bayes decision, is the error rate for the Bayes decision rule, uh, which is which shows that this is optimal. This is the optimal way of making a decision under the assumptions that are embedded in the axioms of probability and the way you split up your sets and define your random variables and so forth. Okay, so if you recall, that means we're going to choose hypothesis 1 when our probability density function multiplied by our prior is greater than uh, our probability density function given omega 2 is true weighted by the prior omega 2 and we're going to choose hypothesis 2 when we don't choose hypothesis 1. And that concludes this S lecture. I'd just like to remind you that there are more S lectures available at projectrea.org and um, thank you for listening.